Oh, yet we trust that somehow good will be the final goal of ill. To pangs of nature, sins of will, defects of doubt, and taints of blood, that nothing walks with aimless feet, that not one life shall be destroyed, are cast as rubbish to the void. When God hath made the pile complete, that not a worm is cloven in vain, that not a moth with vain desire is shriveled in a fruitless fire, are but subserves another's gang. Behold, we know not anything. I can but trust that good shall fall at last far off, at last to all. And every winter change to spring, so runs my dream. But what am I, an infant crying in the night, an infant crying for the light, and with no language but a cry? Always hope for things to get better. The wish that of the living whole no life may fail beyond the grave derives it not from what we have. The likest God within the soul. Our God and nature then a strife. That nature lends such evil dreams. So careful of the type she seems. So careless of the single life that I, considering everywhere her secret meaning in her deeds, and finding that of fifty seeds she often brings but one to bear, I falter where I firmly trod, and falling with my weight of cares upon the great world's altar stairs that slope through darkness up to God, I stretch lame hands of faith and grope and gather dust and chaff and call to what I feel is Lord of all, and faint trust the larger hope. Focus on the positive. So careful of the type, but no. From scarped cliff and quarreled stone, she cries a thousand types are gone. Thou makest thine appeal to me. I bring to life I bring to death, the spirit does, but mean the breath. I know more, and he shall he, man her last work, who seemed so fair, such splendid purpose in his eyes, who rolled the psalm to wintry skies, who built him fanes of fruitless prayer, who trusted God. Was love indeed, and love creation's final law, through nature, red in tooth and claw, with the ravine shrieked against his creed, who loved, who suffered countless ills, who battled for the true, the just, be blown about the desert dust, are sealed within the iron hills, no more a monster than a dream, a discord dragons of the prime. That terror each other in their slime. Were mellow music matched with him? O oh, life as futile then as frail. O oh, for thy voice to soothe and bless, What hope of answer or redress? Behind the veil, behind the veil. Prayer is always successful. In a way. Peace, come away, the song of woe is after all an earthly song. Peace, come away, we do him wrong to sing so wildly. Let us go, come, let us go. Your cheeks are pale, but half my life I leave behind. Methinks my friend is richly shrined, but I shall pass, my words will fail. Yet in those ears, till hearing dies, 
when set slow bell will seem to toll the passing of the sweetest soul that ever looked with human eyes. I hear it now and o'er and o'er. Eternal greetings to the dead. An Abi 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 said, Adieu, adieu forevermore. Certainly, we should respect the dead. Of course, that doesn't mean we should worship the dead, but... In those sad words, I took farewell, like echoes in sepulchre halls. As drop by drop the water falls, in vaults and catacombs they fell, and falling idly broke the peace of hearts that beat from day to day, half conscious of their dying clay. And those cold crypts where they shall cease, the high muse answered, Wherefore grieve thy burden with a fruitless tear? Abide a little longer here, and thou shalt take a nobler leave. Realize that you have unexpected goodbyes. And just, you know, let the ends be pass. But on my bed the moonlight falls. I know that in thy place of rest, by that broad water of the west, there comes a glory on the walls. Thy marble bright in dark appears, as slowly steals a silver flame along the letters of thy name. And o'er the number of thy years, the mystic glory swims away from off my bed the moonlight dies and closing caves of wearied eyes i sleep till dusk is dipped in gray and then i know the mist is drawn a lucid veil from coast to coast and in the dark church like a ghost thy tablet glimmers to the dawn remember to pass on of your connections if they're worthwhile to others I dreamed there would be spring no more that nature's ancient power was lost the streets were black with smoke and frost they shattered trifles at the door I wandered from the noisy town and found a wood with thorny boughs I took the thorns to bind my brows I wore them like a civic crown. I met with scoffs, I met with scorns, from youth and babe and hoary hairs. They called me in the public squares, the fool that wears the crown of thorns. They called me fool, they called me child. I found an angel of the night. The voice was low, the look was bright. He looked upon my crown and smiled. He reached the glory of a hand that seemed to touch it into leaf. The voice was not the voice of grief. The words were hard to understand. Sometimes we'll get into states where we can't understand things that we don't, that we would have understood otherwise. And that's okay. Grief can be one of those. Sometimes we're, you know, we'll understand things that we don't understand otherwise or... You know, it's just our focus has shifted or something like that, so it's not always a bad thing. I cannot see the features right when on the gloom I strive to paint. The face I know, the hues are faint, and mixed with hollow masks of night. Cloud towers by ghostly mansions wrought, a gulf that ever shuts and gapes. A hand that points, and pallid shapes, and shadowy thoroughfares of thought. And crowds that stream from yawning doors, and... Shawls of puckered faces drive, dark bulks that tumble half alive, and lazy lengths on boundless shores, till all at once, beyond the will, I hear a wizard music roll, and through a lattice on the soul, looks thy fair face and makes it still. Be prepared to be put in your place. 
What hope is there for modern rhyme to him who turns a musing eye on songs and deeds and lives that lie far shortened in the tract of time? These mortal lullabies of pain may bind a book, may line a box, may serve to churl a maiden's locks, or when a thousand moons shall wane, a man upon a stall may find, and passing turn the page that tells a grief that then changed to something else, sung by long-forgotten mind. But what of that? My darkened way shall ring with music all the same. To breathe my loss is more than fame. To utter love more sweet than praise. Life is about more than yourself. Could I have said, while he was here, my love shall now, no further range. There cannot come a mellower change, for now is love, mature in ear. Love then had hope, a richer store. What end is here to my complaint? This haunting whisper makes me faint. More years had made me love thee more. But death returns an answer sweet, my sudden frost with sudden gang, and gave all ripeness to the grain it might have drawn from after heat. And, you know, careful how you treat people while they're here. Dip down upon the northern shore. O oh, sweet new year delaying long, thou dost expectant nature wrong delaying long delay no more what stays thee from the clouded noons thy sweetness from its proper place can trouble live with april days or sadness in the summer moons bring orcus bring the foxglove spire the little speedwell's darling blue deep tulips dashed with fiery dew Laburnum's dropping wells of fire. O thou new year delaying long, delayest the sorrow in my blood. That longs to burst a frozen bud and flood a fresher throat with song. It's important to uh, appreciate the seasons. Sweet after showers, ambrosial air that rollest from the gorgeous gloom of evening over break and bloom and meadow slowly breathing bare the round of space and wrapped below through all the dewy tasseled wood and shadowing down the horned flood in ripples fan my brows and blow the fever from my cheek and sigh, the full new life that feeds thy breath, throughout my frame till doubt and death, ill brethren, let the fancy fly, from belt to belt of crimson seas, on leagues of odor streaming far, to where in yonder orient star a hundred spirits whisper peace. When you give peaceful greetings, you may, you know, the place may not seem like it has any in it, but there's, you know, the unseen to greet. Wild bird, whose warble liquid sweet rings Eden through the budded quicks. Oh, tell me where the senses mix. Oh, tell me where the passions meet. Whence radiate fierce extremes employ thy spirits in the darkening leaf, and in the midmost hearts of grief thy passion clasps a secret joy, and I, my harp, would prelude woe. I cannot all command thy strings. The glory of the sum of things will flash along the chords and go. When it comes to what we're aware of, what are the faculties? 
When rosy plummets tuft the larch, and rarely pipes the mounted thrush, or underneath the barren bush flits by the sea blue bird up march. Come where the form by which I know thy spirit in time among thy peers, the hope of unaccompanied of unaccomplished years. Be large and lucid round thy brow, when summer's hourly mellowing change may breathe with many roses sweet upon the thousand waves of wheat that ripple round the lonely grange. Come not in watches of the night, but where the sunbeam broodeth warm. Come beauteous in thine after form, and like a finer light in light. Always plan to accomplish more. I shall not see thee, dare I say, no spirit ever break the band that stays him from the native land. <laughs> Where first he walked when clasped in clay. No visual shade of someone lost, but he, the spirit himself, may come. Where all the nerve of sense is numb, spirit to spirit, ghost to ghost. Oh, therefore, from thy sightless range, with God's an unconjectured bliss, oh, from the distance of the abyss, of tenfold complicated change, descend and touch and enter here. The wish too strong for words to name, that in this blindness of the frame, my ghost may feel that thine is near. There are other things, but all these male and female things, they're not gods. The genderless, unfallen angels, well, all the unfallen angels are genderless, really, although some may be perceived as male or female or something in a particular circumstance or interpreted as such, but um, all these things can be referred to as gods and goddesses in English, but not everything that's called a god is a god. How pure at heart and sound in head with what divine affections bold should be the man whose thought would hold an hour's communion with the dead. In vain shalt thou or any call the spirits from their golden day, except like them thou too canst say, my spirit is at peace with all. They haunt the silence of the breast, imaginations calm and fair, the memory like a cloudless air, the conscious as a sea at rest. But when the heart is full of din and doubt beside the portal waits, they can but listen at the gates and hear the household jar within. And on some level, all worship of anything except God is in vain. By night we lingered on the dawn, for underfoot the herb was dry, and genial warmth, and o'er the sky, the silvery haze of summer dawn, and calm that let the tapers burn, unwavering, not a cricket churred, the brook alone far off with surd, and on the board the fluttering urn, and bats went round in fragrant skies, and wheeled or lit the filmy shapes that haunt the dusk with ermine capes and woolly breasts and beaded eyes while now we sang old songs that pealed from knoll to knoll were couched at ease the white kine glimmered and the trees laid their dark arms about the field but when those others one by one withdrew themselves from me and night and in the house light after light went out and I was all alone. A hunger seized my heart, I read, of that glad year which once had been, and those fallen leaves which kept their green. 
the noble letters of the dead, and strangely on the silence broke, the silence speaking words and strange was love's dumb cry, defying change, to test his worth, and strangely spoke the faith, the vigor, bold to dwell on doubts that drive the coward back, and keen through wordy snares to track suggestion to her inmost cell. So word by word and line by line, the dead man touched me from the past, and all at once it seemed, at last, his living soul was fashioned, that was flashed on mine, and mine and his was wound and whirled about the imperial heights of thought, and came on that which is and caught the deep pulsations of the world, Ionian music measuring out the steps of time, the shocks of chance, the blows of death, at length my trance, was cancelled, stricken, through with doubt, vague words, but awe, how hard to frame, and matter molded, forms a speech, are even for an elect to reach, through memory, that which I became, till now the doubtful dusk revealed, the knolls once more, where couched at ease, the white kind glimmered, and the trees laid their dark arms about the field, and sucked from out the distant gloom, a breeze began to tremble over the large leaves of the sycamore, and fluctuate all the still perfume, and gathering freshlier overheard. Overhead rocked the full foliaged elms, and swung the heavy folded rose, and flung the lilies to and fro, and said, The dawn, the dawn, and died away. And east and west, without a breath, Mixed their dim lights, like life and death, To broaden and a boundless day. And that which involves the fire can certainly be a spiritual offering. The time draws near the birth of Christ, the moon is hid, the night is still. A single church below the hill is peeling folded in the mist, a single peal of bells below that wakens at this hour of rest. A single murmur in the breast that these are not the bells I know, like strangers' voices here they sound, in lands where not a memory strays, nor landmark breathes of other days, but all is new on hollowed ground. Live each moment for itself. Ring out wild bells to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light. The year is dying in the night. Ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new. Ring happy bells across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind. For those that here we see no more, ring out the feud of rich and poor. Ring in redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause. An ancient forms a party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life. With sweeter manners, pure laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin. The faithless coldness of the tunes. Ring out, ring out. My mournful rhymes. But ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out the false pride in place and blood the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right. Ring in the common love of good. Ring out the shapes of foul disease. Ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old. Ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free. The larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land. Ring in the Christ that is to be. And death is the ultimate leveler now, isn't it? Now fades the last long streak of snow. Now burgeons every maze of quick. About the flowering squares and thick. By ashen roots, the violets below. Now rings the woodland loud and long. The distance takes a lovelier hue. And drowned in yonder... Living blue, 
the lark becomes a sightless song. Now dancing, the lights on lawn, Leia, the flocks are wider down the vale, and milkier every milky sail. On winding stream, our distant sea, where now the sea mew pipes our dives in yonder greening gleam and fly, the happy birds that change their sky to build and brood that lives their lives from land to land and in my breast spring wakens too and my regret becomes an April violet and buds and blossoms like the rest sometimes you think oh I'm not going to be like the others and then you are it's it then regret for buried time that keen lear in sweet April wakes and meets the year and gives and takes the colors of the crescent prime not all the songs the stirring air the life reorient out of dust cry through the senses to heart and trust and that which made the world so fair not all regret the face will shine upon me while I muse alone, and that dear voice I once have known, so speak to me of me and mine, yet less of sorrow lives in me, for days of happy commune dead, lest yearning for the friendship fled, than some strong bond which is to be. And it's possible that after death we can be united with our friends. But it would only make sense if that's, if they're on a spiritual level where that is possible. I mean, in terms of justice, not, I was friends with a good person, so I'm gonna, doesn't quite work that way. Um, oh, days and hours, your work is this, to hold me from my pop, from my proper place. A little while from his embrace, for fuller grain of after bliss that out of distance might ensue, desire of nearness dumbly sweet, and unto meeting when we meet, delight a hundredfold accrue for every grain of sand that runs, and every span of shade that steals, and every kiss of toothed wheels, and all the courses of the sun. Well, it's kind of like we're here in life do our time, isn't it? Doors where my heart was used to beat, so quickly not as one that weeps. I come once more, the city sleeps. I smell the meadow in the street. I hear a chirp of birds I see twixt the black fronts, long withdrawn. A light blue lane of early, of early dawn and think of early days and thee, and bless thee for thy lips are bland, and bright the friendship of thine eye, and in my thoughts with scarce a sigh, I take the pressure of thine hand. It's the time from dawn to sunrise is an essential time for making horizons in pretty much every spiritual tradition. Well, except the Protestant Christian, maybe, but there rolls the deep where grew the tree. O oh, earth, what changes hast thou seen? There where the long street roars hath been the stillness of the central sea. The hills are shadows, and they flow from form to form, and nothing stands. They melt like mist, the solid lands, like clouds they shape themselves and go. But in my spirit will I dwell, and dream my dream, and hold it true. For though my lips may breathe adieu, I cannot think the thing farewell. Yeah, reality isn't according to just your conception of it. 
They can line up. Love is and was my Lord and King, and in his presence I attend to hear the tidings of my friend, which every hour his couriers bring. Love is and was my King and Lord, and will be, though as yet I keep, within his court on earth and sleep, encompassed by his faithful guard, and here, at times, a sentinel, who moves about from place to place, and whispers to the world's a space, in the deep night, that all is well. Your reasons for comfort might be just around the corner. Dear friend, far off my lost desire, so far, so near in woe and weal, O oh, love the most, when most I feel, there is a lower and a higher, known and unknown, human, divine, sweet human hand and lips and eyes, sweet human hand and lips and eye, dear heavenly friend, that canst not die, mine, mine, forever, ever mine, strange friend, past, present, and to be, love deeplier, darklier understood. Behold, I dream, a dream of good, and mingle all the world with thee. People often think more of people in death than in life. Well, I mean, more ability in death than in life. Thy voice is on the rolling air. I hear thee where the waters run. Thou standest in the rising sun, and in the setting thou art fair. What art thou then? I cannot guess. But though I seem in star and flower, to feel thee some diffusive power, I do not therefore love thee less. My love involves the love before. My love is vaster passion now. Though mixed with God and nature thou, I seem to love thee more and more. For off thou art, but ever nigh. I have thee still, and I rejoice. I prosper, circled with thy voice. I shall not lose thee, though I die. Now, it's important to um, regard maybe the words and the acts more than the person themselves. Oh, certainly respect the people, but um, 